Hey, Blind Man Bird here, and yesterday my colorful wheel light, my colorful bicycle wheel light, which is this gizmo right here, arrived from uh, GearBest, and that's in working order, and all the parts seem complete. Um, I haven't had, um, I'll talk about the software issue in a moment, but um, what it basically is, is this gizmo, which is a set of uh, individually addressable RGB LEDs, we'll turn it on in a moment, with, um, you can see all, along the edges there's a whole bunch of um, drivers for the LEDs here and uh, there's also a very important sensor right here, this thing which uh, you will, this will be mounted, uh, you have kind of these um, uh, cable ties here which are going to be used to mount this to the spokes and uh, and the axle around the axle of a bicycle okay and then this goes on the rear bracket of the bicycle basically this is fixed and this will be spinning and this is this sensor is very important because as that as that uh, sensor passes this little permanent magnet uh, that's how it detects uh, the rotation rate so basically what this gizmo is doing is presenting a video image as it spins the LEDs are changing and it's projecting a polar coordinate uh, video image which is kinda cool so I'll talk about, I'll turn it on in a second but let me explain all the little bits you get, the box is empty um, inside this battery pack here we have a 3.7 volt 220 milliamp hour rechargeable battery uh, when this arrived it arrived with about 3.7 volts on it and I just uh, recharged it and got uh, something like um, uh, well let's let me actually measure it I don't know if I'll be able to do that yeah I can't really measure and take the video at the same time but I believe I got this up to about 4.2 volts by just running it through this charger you just need to make sure the positive side is on this side this is the positive side and this will be a red light while it's changing, charging and then it will go green the moment it's fully charged. So I have a fully charged battery here and as I remember it, it goes in with the positive end towards this button here. So you need to insert it in a specific way. This is a little hard for me to uh, screw on one-handed. Let me see if I can do that. It's kind of hard to hold the iPad with one hand and screw this with the other, but let's see if I can do it. Alright, so other things that we get are a USB programming cable. This is not used on the bike. You see it goes from USB to this round uh, connector here where the battery normally sits. And uh, so during programming of the uh, patterns in here, you can uh, use this to go to a Windows uh, computer. Um, this are, these are the cable ties. There's two kinds. There's big white ones which I assume are for the spoke thing itself. You can see there's these slots here where the uh, cable ties will go through. And then there's black ties here which I believe are to mount the battery. I haven't really gone through the instructions yet but that's to mount this um, battery thing uh, properly. And then you have a little instruction. Oh, here's the magnet thing which, is, which came in this plastic case. You have a little inspection sticker. You have some instructions here which are in English translation, uh, meaning it's a little, the, the uh, grammar's a little weird, but it's clear what the intent is. And then here's one of the first problems I have to solve. The software comes on a, on a non-standard DVD, a miniature DVD-R. So uh, unfortunately I have only slot, light, slot loading super drives on my Mac. So I can't read the software off of this. And I also noticed it came up came kind of beat up. You can kind of see that. I'm sure it's going to read properly once I clean it. But uh, the DVD arrived in a kind of a bad state. But um, my big problem is I can't insert this into the slot loading drive to read it. Um, and uh, so I'm going to need to find a top loading DVD data player of some sort. Uh, I might need to go to thrift stores or go online and maybe even buy one to read this darn thing. Once I get the software uh, off of this or maybe I'll make an image of this I'll post it online because it's ridiculous that you can't use this in a slot loading drive so that's kind of a mistake um, obviously they would have had to change the design of the box to put a full-size DVD in there but why didn't they just um, enclose like uh, let's say a, a small USB thumb drive 
that would be an, an easy way to distribute the software. So little, that's my first thing, is I, I can't get at the software on that until I put a little effort and thought into it, but I will post that software online. Because that's the other issue in these instructions, and maybe I'll contact the manufacturer, there doesn't seem to be any way you can download, there's no link to a website where you can download this software. So that's two strikes. And we'll see if I can fix that by posting the software, by reading this and then posting the software online. Or maybe somebody's already done it. One very nice thing about the design is, um, you can probably see it a little bit in the video, all of the electronics here has been coated, has been sealed inside a plastic coating. And this is also very, uh, I wouldn't say that it's watertight necessarily. I'm sure there's some electronics in there. In fact, the microcontroller is probably inside there uh, that drives this whole thing. But um, the, um, the design is basically so that I would imagine you can actually use this in a, in a rain. Don't, don't take my word for it. But the way that all these things screw together very tightly, and this is, this is also you know several threads, it would be very hard for water to get inside this. So um, you might ruin your, your device if you take it out in the rain or you might need to uh, air dry it out or soak it in alcohol to get the to extract the water but um, I'm going to actually experiment with that and see how waterproof this is at some point not that we get much water here in Arizona okay so let's experiment with turning it on I had a little bit of an issue where when I hand tightened this it wasn't quite tight enough but when we turn this on we see the um, LED array goes immediately into a kind of a test mode uh, this is not a rotating mode, it's not changing or anything as this rotates. It can't even sense that it's rotating at this point because I'm, I'm not using the, uh, the magnet above the sensor to let it know it's, it's rotating. Let's do it this way where it's so the sensor is visible. So this is just kind of letting you know that the device is on. You'll notice also that right here there's two buttons. There's a reset button and there is a mode button. The reset button does exactly what you would think. It just resets the microcontroller to the start of whatever its program is. And in this mode, the mode button doesn't really do anything. It doesn't change the patterns. You can see it's reacting. It goes, kind of gives us that, it kind of freezes for a moment and then gives us that, uh, that pattern again. But I would assume that uh, the mode button is how you trigger different uh, different programming patterns. I'm not sure how much memory is in that microcontroller, how many uh, I have to explore that. But let's see what happens now as we take this device. Let me flip it over. And let's kind of simulate what would happen if it was on a bike. So as the magnet as the magnet passes over the sensor and I do it faster and faster, you can kind of see it's actually generating a video image, which we can't see what it is because we're not, I'm not spinning, spinning the thing. But as we kind of simulate the uh, the wheel turning, I could do, if you do it slower, you can kind of see there's actually a pattern there. Um, it would be interesting to see what that pattern was, but I'd have to spin, I'd have to spin this. So one of my first projects is either buy a bike, which I don't have. I kind of bought this without having a bike or just simply get a small uh, electric motor, mount that to the wall, mount this to the motor, and basically turn this into a propeller. Then on my wall, I would simply mount this little magnet behind that sensor so that I could see what the patterns were. And so that's actually, my first project is to read, read the software, and I'm kind of annoyed that it comes in this small format DVD. My second project is probably going to be to make a little wall mounting propeller out of this. And the third thing is to start saving up for a, for a bicycle, since I've needed one for quite a while. So anyway, I thought I'd give you, a, give you all a show as to what this is. Ultimately, what I would really like to do, though, is replace their, their firmware in this with my own firmware. And that will involve a little bit of frippery and hacking. And in fact, what I may need to do is actually sacrifice one of these by cracking this open to investigate what the electronics is inside. And I'm sure that once I crack this open, it probably won't seal again ever the same way. So I'd be sacrificing one of these. But what I'd really like to do is get inside there, get at the microcontroller, and reprogram it myself. Why? Because I've got experience and I've got some code 
for Mastec LED uh, shades in which you can do 30 frame per second short bits of animation. And it strikes me that as long as I can figure out how to get some memory in there, like a chip, like a, let's say, a, an ARM chip with a decent amount of memory, you could actually um, set up uh, sequences of low resolution video, uh, 30 frame per second video, which would be pretty cool. Be pretty cool. Looks like there's a power saving mode, so after it's been in that test mode for a while and it's not sensing that you're moving, it, it kind of power saves. Yeah, that's the case. Once once you start moving again, it uh, it starts uh, once once it senses that the bicycle wheel is moving. So after after you're not moving for a certain amount of time, this this pattern stops. Again, all of that is controlled by the default firmware in here. And my third big project after playing around with this for a while is going to be to crack that open and see if I can get at the microprocessor core, uh, microcontroller core and just basically reprogram it with my own firmware to do uh, full rate 30 frame per second sequences which is which is tricky uh, but it can be done alrighty this is Blind Man Bert signing off you all should get one of these um, another thing I'll mention is Gearbest is a vendor that is known for having a lot of people have had problems with them um, I personally have a policy knowing that they can be uh, a little funny in their customer support. I've never had any problems with them and the one time a shipment was delayed um, it was actually not their fault. It was the sh shipping company lost the package in Singapore apparently on the way from China to here to the United States and so I just you know I, after six weeks I contact which is the normal shipping period I saw that it had stalled in the tracking and I contacted Gearbest and I said hey it's stuck I gave them a fixed date for which I could, I could, it was for a project. I said, as long as I receive it before this date, we're good. After that, I need a refund. They found uh, the unit in Germany and I got it within three or four days. So I was actually really happy with uh, with their customer service responding to that shipping, shipping glitch. And that's the only time I've ever had an issue. But my policy is this. I just basically don't ever have more than one order out with them. So... You know, if they ever fail, if they ever fail to deal with a glitch, I won't put another order out. So I never have that much money riding on the line. And as I remember, this was about $27 or $28 uh, with the slow shipping from China. It's a little bit more, a little over $30 if you order from a U.S. warehouse. All right, Blind Man Burt signing off. I hope you enjoyed this little demo.